Equipment found in the dark room. When the dark room is in use, the in use light will be on, located above the dark room door. When the dark room is in use, you would enter through the dark room revolving door. Here we have our mobile. Here you see our mobile cart. Supplies for taking x rays are located on this cart. This is entering the dark room with the safe lights only on. It's very, very dark. This is the same view with the white overhead light on. Here in the dark room, we have our drying rack. On the drying rack are film racks. While the films are wet, we hang them here to air dry. This tray contains floating thermometers and timers used when developing x-rays. This is a chart with recommended times for developing and fixing x-rays using a manual process. Located on the back counter are one of three dip tanks used for manually processing x-rays. The counters also have what we call a dark room working space. This is an area used to unwrap films prior to processing. Located on the upper back wall as well as the ceiling are safety lights. This allows film packets to be opened without exposure of the film prior to processing. Drop them in. You'll also find two plastic containers on the back counter. This is where we dispose of the lead from the x-ray. Here we can see the lead from the x-ray packet. We are also fortunate to have two automatic processors. Here is our second automatic processor. When entering the darkroom while in use, you must come through the revolving darkroom door. Here are the components of our film package. Our waterproof outer package is a soft vinyl wrapper to protect the moisture from the film. Next we have our lead foil. This is a single sheet that shields the film from backscattered or secondary radiation. Next we have our black paper which shields both sides of the film from the light. And finally we have the film. It can be a single or a double film in the packet. Directions for opening a film packet. When opening a film packet, hold it securely in one hand. It's important that your hold is secure as to not to drop the film. Remember your visibility is limited when you're in the dark room. First pull up on the tab on the label side. Next pull back the black paper tab out and you will see the lead foil. Pull the lead foil out, placing it in its proper receptacle. Then you'll pull the black envelope out and you'll see how the film is situated inside that little envelope. Then you take your film out, process it accordingly, and dispose of your paper and your outer wrapper properly. You'll see that this film packet has two films. It's a double film packet. This is identifying equipment found in a dental x-ray operatory. First we have our dental chair. To control our dental chair you're going to use the foot control which is located on the floor behind the base of the dental chair. Above the chair located is the dental light. On the wall there's hanging the dental lead apron used for patient protection. On the back wall of the operatory is the dental x-ray unit. The on and off switch is located at the bottom surface of the panel. When the power is on, the light will also illuminate. Go. The tube head, which contains the x-ray tube that produces the dental x-ray beam, the positioning indicating device, which is located at the end of the tube head, is what restricts the size of the x-ray beam. The extension arm is what allows for movement and positioning of the tube head. When x-rays are not being used, the tube head is stored on the back wall in the position you see right now. 
The control panel, which is located outside the operatory, regulates the x-ray beam based on the area of the mouth being taken and also is the ability to expose. Patient positioning. You position the chair with the foot pedal. It can move the chair up and down, back or forward. When seating your patient, the chair should be in an upright and low position. Once you have your patient seated, you can adjust the headrest so that it com it's comfortable for the patient. When taking x-rays, you should adjust your patient's chair, the height, up or down, depending on which films you're taking. You must also remember to have the occlusal plane parallel to the floor. The head of the patient should be straight up and down and not tilted to one side. Setting exposure factors. This is the control panel for the x-ray units in operatories 1 through 4. There's a setting for children under 8 or adults. And then you can see there's maxillary and mandibular molar region, posteriors, and then there's the premolar area, maxillary mandibular, and then the anteriors, canines and central incisors. And then there is the anterior occlusal film exposure settings, and then to expose it's in the center. And then you have the KV and the MA settings below. And then there's some manual where you can change the settings up or down. For operatories 5 and 6, there's a different control panel. This is what it looks like. The details are in your syllabus for both control panels. But on this one, it shows the occlusal film to the far left and then it shows the molars and the premolars, maxillary and mandibular, and the anteriors. It also shows for children under 8, there's a small person, and adults would be the larger person. And then above the teeth area, it shows the plus and the minus. That's your manual to increase or decrease the setting, the time setting. And then to expose the radiograph, it's on the far right. When you push that button, the x-ray light lights up. Push the button. <laughs> barriers. Before placing barriers, you must pre-clean your operatory with simple green. This is the spray and wipe method for surface cleaning. See how she has her utility gloves on. For barriers, we'll start with the headrest cover, then the light handle, the light handle, the light switch, and the exposure controls. On the ledge below exposure controls, you may place a paper towel to rest your films along with a plastic cup to put used films in. Recirculation of the room. After you're finished using the operatory and your patient has been dismissed, you may clean your room. First, you'll place your PPE on, which is glasses, masks, and utility gloves. Remove all barriers and instruments from operatory. Remove all barriers. We'll start with the headrest and then you can place the other barriers into that and dispose of in the trash. Use Birex to disinfect the room by wiping it on all surfaces, including the lead apron with a 4x4 gauze.
Manual processing is a simple method of processing films. The equipment needed is a master tank. It holds the two insert tanks and the circulating water. The insert tanks, of course, are what contain the developer and the fixer. The accessories needed for manually processing films are first a timer used to time the film while in the developer and the fixer. Second, a stir stick. This is used to stir the solution. The motion will mix the chemicals and equalize the temperature. A floating thermometer. This is used to check the temperature of the developer and the fixer. And film hangers. These are stainless steel hangers equipped with a clip for holding the film. When the temperature has been checked with a thermometer and the timers are set for developing and fixing based on that temperature, now we are ready to, we are ready to proceed with developing films. The intraoral films your intraoral film should be carefully unwrapped over a clean working surface. We're going to clip one film to the hanger using one clip per film. You want to make sure you clip one film per clip, just like so. Testing the films to make sure they're secure. Immerse the film hanger with the films into the developing solution. Gently agitate the film hanger up and down to remove any surface tension from the film. Then hang the rack on the side of the tank and start the preset timer. <laughs> it's on the rock. Once our film has been hooked on the side of the tank, again we will set our preset timer. After timer goes off, remove film hanger from the de developing tank and submerge rack in circulating water. Agitate for 20 to 30 seconds. Remove and drain water by tipping hanger towards the water bath for several seconds. Now submerge the rack with the films in the fixture solution. Gently agitate the film hanger up and down making sure all the films are submerged then hang the film rack from the side of the tank and set the timer. After timer goes off, remove the film hanger from the fixer tank, again draining excess solution back into the tank, and place the rack in the circulating water. You want to allow the films to wash for the recommended time. Now you may hang the rack on the tank on the outside so it's in the circulating water. Remove rack from wash water and gently shake off excessive water. Cover the process tank. Using a paper towel to be very careful not to drip any water on the darkroom floor, you're going to hang your labeled film rack on the drying racks to air dry. Keep hanger clear of anything that might damage the film. You might want to protect your, you want to protect your films. When your films are dry, you will remove them from the drying rack. When your films are completely through drying, you'll place them in the coin envelope that will be labeled appropriately with the patient's name and date of exposure and filed in the, in the proper file. When all manual processing complete, make sure the tank is covered and clean the working area, keeping the area clean of debris and moisture. This is our automatic processor. With this processor, the power button is in the back of the machine, the control panel located in the front of the machine has a different functions. Here we can see the low temperature light. 
When the temperature of the developer and fixer are low, that light will come on. Next we have the processing light, which tells you that film, the machine is processing films. And the film present light, that tells you that there is film in the developer and the fixer. Next we have our time box. This determines the length of the films to be processed. There's four and a half minutes for processing, six minutes for processing, and then endofilms which are processed in one minute. This is our other automatic processor. This one is slightly different than the one we just saw. Here the on and off switch is located on the front of the machine, and the control panel, which is also located on the front face, has similar components. We have a temperature area that tells us what the temperature is when it is at the proper temperature, then we have a ready light that comes on. Next, we have the determination of speed for films in four little white areas. When the film is processing, the processing light comes on. <laughs> and also when the power is on, we have a power light for this machine. When processing films in the automatic processor, First, you carefully unwrap each exposed film over a clean working surface. Handling the films by the edges only, you will insert each unwrapped film into the feed slot of the processor, one film at a time. There are four entry guides for intraoral films. Feeding the film into any one of these slots will activate the processing mode. Allow at least 10 seconds between the insertion of each film. The machine will allow 15 seconds between films to prevent overlapping, after which the film present light turns off. Whenever possible, you want to alternate slots when loading your processor. After the films have been inserted into the automatic processor, allow four to six minutes for the automation process to complete. Retrieving the process radiographs from the film recovery slot on the outside of the automatic processor. Here we see we were using alternating slots. Slot 2 and 4, those films have completed the process, and slot 1 and 3, those films are just coming out of the processor. You always want to be careful when feeding your films through the processor not to insert them too quickly. Overlapping films result in non-diagnostic radiographs. When your films are complete, you want to dispose of your film packet and wrappings and place the lead foil in the recycle container. Always pick up after yourself and keep your working area clean and dry for the next person using the automatic processor. For a bite wing exposure, you will need your size 2 film and a bite wing loop. You need to place your film in your bite wing holder. Notice the tube side is where the little tab is on the holder to be placed into the patient's mouth. Prior to film placement you must always set the vertical angulation at plus 5 to 10 degrees. Set the horizontal angulation. You can use your finger and place it along the premolar area. Align the open end of the PID parallel with your index finger and curvature of the arch in the premolar area. Direct the central ray through the contact area which is between the maxillary first and second premolar. Make sure the PID is positioned far enough forward to cover both maxillary and mandibular canines and is positioned evenly over the mandible and maxillary arches. 
The middle of the PID should be directed at the level of the occlusal plane. The film can now be placed without moving the PID. Insert the film into the patient's mouth. I'm going to be careful to move the tongue out of the way so you can cause as least amount of discomfort to the patient as possible. Now you want to position the film to cover the mesial one-third of the canines and all the premolar teeth. With the lower half of the film placed between the tongue and the lower teeth, place the body surface of the tab over the occlusal surfaces of the teeth, center the film on the second premolar. While stabilizing the film and holding the bite tab, ask the patient to slowly close down. Check for cone cuts. You're going to stand behind the PID and make sure no portion of the film should be visible. The film should be covered by the opening of the PID. Step outside the room to expose the film by pressing the exposure button on the control panel. I didn't get to walk. Now after the exposure, you want to come in and take the exposed film out of the patient's mouth. You want to place the exposed film in a cup and pick up the unexposed film because now we will do the right molar bite wing. Now we're going to take the right molar bite wing. Again, your vertical angulation will be at least plus 5 to 10 degrees. You will test the horizontal, excuse me, set the horizontal angulation. You can use your finger along the molar area. Align the open end of the PID parallel with your index finger and curvature of the arch in the molar area. You're going to direct the central ray through the contact area. which is between the first and second mandibular molar. Make sure the PID is positioned far enough back to cover the distal third molars or the third molar region on both the maxillary and mandibular arches. This will help you avoid a cone cut. The middle of the PID should be directed at the level of the occlusal plane. The film now can be placed in the patient's mouth without moving the PID. Inserting the patient's mouth, starting with the film parallel to the floor of the mouth, you're going to position the film to cover the molar teeth. The lower half of the film is placed between the tongue and the lower teeth, the binding surfaces of the tab over the occlusal surface. And while stabilizing the film, you're going to hold the bite tab and slowly close the patient's mouth. You want to check for cone cuts. Again, stand behind the PID and the tube head. Look alongside the PID. And no portion of the film should be visible at this time. Now you'll step outside the room to expose the film by pressing the exposure button on the control panel. Again, we will come in, remove our patient's film, place it in the cup, take our lead apron off of our patient, and then proceed to develop our films. At Santa Rosa Junior College, you'll be using a clear vinyl film mount with 20 windows or frames in which the individual radiographs will be placed or mounted. Your mount must be labeled and dated. The small raised bump, known as the identification dot, is seen in the corner of each intraoral packet, the dot on the packet, indicates the location of the embossed identification dot on the radiograph. The dot is used to determine the film orientation. When mounting, all of the embossed dots must face the same direction. This allows us to distinguish between the patient's right and left side of the patient. Examine each radiograph and check for the dot. 
Then place the radiograph on the work surface with the raised side of the dot facing up prior to mounting. Handle radiographs by the edge with only clean hands. Labial mounting with the dot raised is the preferred method of mounting. With this method, the radiographs are viewed as if the viewer is looking directly at the patient. The patient's left side is on the viewer's right side, and the patient's right side is on the viewer's left side. You may choose to sort the films into three groups first. Bite wings, anterior periapicals, posterior periapicals. It's recommended that you mount your bite wing films first in the center of your mount. This gives you a road map for your periapical on the posterior region as to which is maxillary and mandibular. Normal anatomical landmarks will help you distinguish the maxillary from the mandibular films. After mounting the bite wings, you next want to mount the anterior periapicals, starting with the maxillaries first. This will show you where the sinuses are, also the, an the anterior teeth are much larger on the maxillary than they are on the mandibular. The maxillary, you always want to have your roots pointing upward, so the incisal edge of the film is on the bottom portion. Once the maxillary is mounted, then you may move to mount the mandibular anterior films. Again, the roots of the mandibular films will be pointing down, and these teeth are much smaller than the maxillary. After you've mounted your posterior films, you want to check your mount. First, you want to make sure that the embossed dots are oriented correctly, all films are properly arranged in anatomical order, that your most distal third molar teeth are on the outside of your mount, moving on to the anterior teeth. You want that your film is mounted properly labeled and dated. <laughs> you want to make sure that your mount is properly labeled and dated. I don't know how clear it looks here. And also you want to de decide after your films have been to completely mounted, if there's a duplicate set, you'll want to make sure you put that in a coin envelope and label, label it appropriately and file it in the appropriate file. Paralleling technique using the RIN XCP. For the paralleling technique, you will need the RIN XCP instruments using a size 2 and a size 1 film. Before exposing any films, make sure the lead apron is on the chair when exposing film on mannequins. Turn on the x-ray machine and adjust settings on the control panel according to the area of exposure. Okay. Maxillary canine region. Insert size 1 film vertically into bite block with the dot in the slot. Inserting into patient's mouth, position film packet with canine centered on the film. Position film as far posterior as possible and gently close mannequin's mouth. Position the ring and PID. Then expose the film. For the maxillary central lateral region, Insert film pack vertically into the bite block and then center film packet between the central and lateral incisor. Again, position film as far posterior as possible and gently close mannequin. Position the ring and then the PID. then you're ready to expose the film. Canine. Mandibular canine region, insert film into the bite block. This time center the film on the mandibular canine. You may need a cotton roll 
To stabilize the bite block, position the PID and position the ring and the PID. Now the PID, and then you expose the film. Mandibular incisor. For the mandibular incisor region, insert film into bite block and then center film packet between the central incisors. Position the film as far lingual as possible. Gently close mannequin. Slide the ring down until it touches the skin. Position the ring and then the PID. And then expose film. For the posterior area, we'll start with the maxillary premolar. After inserting size 2 film horizontally into the posterior bite block, you'll center the film packet on the second premolar, positioning the film in the mid-palatal area. With the film in place, gently close the mannequin, position the ring and PID, Then expose the film. For the maxillary molar region, insert film into bite block and then center the film packet on the second molar region. In the mid with instrument and film in place, gently close mannequin. Position the ring and then position PID. and then expose film. For the mandibular premolar region, with the film inserted in bite block, center film on the contact point between the second premolar and first molar. Position film as far lingual as possible. With the film positioned as far lingual as possible, be sure to include the distal third of the canine. Gently close the mannequin, position the ring, position PID, and you're ready to expose. For the mandibular molar region, insert film into bite block and then center the film on the second molar, positioning the film as far lingual as the tongue will allow. Gently close mannequin and then position the ring. You may need a cock. Position the ring and then the PID. And expose film. Your evaluation must be done in the proper format. The paper must have your name on it, the date, and the patient's name, and the class. Here we can see the student's name, the date in which the films were taken, the patient's name, and the class. You may check with your instructor because they may want you to determine and write down on your sheet what assignment it is. This information must also be on the coin envelope for the storage of the films. When evaluating your films, you are looking to see if all the criteria have been met. To find a list of criteria as well as the corrections, these are to be found in your syllabus. When doing a write-up, you want to use the wording of both the criteria and the, and the corrections. This is very important to have a proper write-up done. Remember, when talking about the right side or the left side, it's always the patient's right and the patient's left, which does not necessarily correlate with the mount. For evaluation on bite wings, you must list them as if they would be read in a full mouth mount. Right side, molar, then premolar, 
then the left side premolar, and then molar. When evaluating films for a full mouth series, you will begin with the right maxillary molar, then the premolar, continuing on through the anteriors of the maxillary, over to the left premolar, and then the left maxillary molar. Again, then you will list your bite wings, starting with the molar, the premolar, then the premolar and the molar. And finally, you will start with your doing the mandibular, starting with the right molar, the premolar, continuing through with the anteriors, and finally finishing up with the premolar and the left mandibular molar. The process is to read down the list of criteria for the specific film, and if there's any of the criteria that have not been met, then that error is listed along with the corrections. When writing up your errors, you can either use one or the two formats. Regardless of what format you choose to use, when doing your write-up, you must identify the film first. For this example, I just have a bite wing survey, and you'll see that it's on the right side. The first film we have evaluated is the molar region. Now this tooth, you'll see that we have an error listed. The occlusal plane was not even across the film. That was the error. The correction is that I will prevent the film from tilting. This is one form of doing a write-up. Notice the error is listed and then the correction is listed. Continuing, we talk about the premolar region. Again, this is on the right side. Our error is that we do not show at least the distal third of the canine, so our correction will be to maintain horizontal and vertical angulation and move the film distal in the patient's mouth. Now these errors and corrections are almost word for word as to what's in your syllabus. It's very important that both the error and the correction are very, very clear. I can't emphasize that enough. Now this is format one where you have the error listed and then the correction listed. Another format is doing it in sentence form. Here where we have the bite wing survey on the left side with the premolar region listed. Another format is doing it in sentence form. Here where we have the bite wing survey on the left side with the premolar region. This format for the premolar region is done in sentence form as I have said. The error is the distal third of the canine is not shown, and the correction is the horizontal angulation is maintained and the vertical angulation is more towards the distal. Here again, you've listed the error, listed the correction, you just didn't put the word error or the word correction. Now, if you take a film, as we have in this molar film, and all the criteria have been met, which meant you went down every one on the list and you met every one, then you would still acknowledge that film and place all criteria were met. Here for the bite wing survey on our left side, the molar film, all the criteria were met. You will never leave a film out. Think if, oh, I met all the criteria, I don't need to list it. Yes, you do. You must list each and every film that's being evaluated. Both formats use the same wording as in the guide for technical evaluations found in your syllabus. Again, it's very important to list the error and the correction as needed. It must be understood as if someone outside the lab was reading this evaluation. Could they read it and could they understand that there was an error and what corrective action needed to be taken? Now in this evaluation we have the student's name, the date, the patient, and the class. That is all correct, but this is an example of what is not acceptable. It is not acceptable to just label the film, you have bite wing survey, premolar region, are we on the right or left side? That hasn't been listed, so that is incorrect. And here you'll see that there's one through six that are listed, and there's a no, a yes, a yes, a yes, a no, and a no. I don't know what those no's are for. I don't know what those yeses are for. Now, if you look at the number one, it says no, move film distal. There again, you have a word, no, which we're assuming is our error, and then a correction is to move the film distal. But what is the error? There's no, it's not clear to us. So this is not acceptable. You must put it in the format that was listed earlier. This, if you put it in this format, you will not get credit for your work. Finally, I'd like to say that when doing your evaluation write-ups, it's very important that you get it clear and precise as to what needs to be done in regards of your errors and your corrections. You will do this in both semesters in your radiology class, and it's very, very important.